Cause when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away.
chains. Our chains are gone. Our debt is paid. The cross has overthrown. While the guilty one walks free Death would be his portion And I portion liberty Our chains Our chains are gone Our debt is paid The cross has over for throne the grave for Jesus blood that sets us free means death to death and life for me I give my whole life to Dear Heavenly Father, God, uh, we thank you for allowing us to gather here on this Sunday. Uh, we ask you that although we may be online, that you would allow us to be able to focus on the lecture Pastor John will give us. We ask you that you would allow us to stay safe and healthy and you'd protect us in our daily lives. Uh, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The word of God given to us today is Ephesians 2, verse 8 to 9. Ephesians 2, verse 8 to 9. Let's open up our Bible and read the scripture together. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Amen. Hi, everyone. Today is Easter Sunday. I hope this Sunday to be a time for us to commemorate on how Jesus died on the cross and resurrected on the third day. The title of the sermon that we'll be sharing today is Nothing in this world is for free. Nothing is free in this world. Do you know this Korean saying that says, 세상에 공짜는 없다? Meaning, there's nothing free in this world. This phrase originates from China. Back in the days, there was a Chinese king, and he gathered a couple of wise men, and he told them, 
You guys, you see, you have so many people, and they are having a hard time to leave. And I think it's about time for us to provide them some wisdom of how to live. So why don't you gather and you think about it, and you bring me a phrasings or words or sentences that will bring messages and wisdom to the people in my kingdom. So these wise men went around the world, collected books from the east, from the west, from philosophers, and from everyone, and read it. And they brought with this summary of what they think would be adequate wisdom to convey to the people. So they came up to the king with this 12-volume book, 12 books, a book of 12 volumes. Hey, king, here we are. We have studied really, really, really hard, and here are the wisdoms that will be very useful if you teach your people. And the king saw these 12 books, and he was so surprised. 12 books? I mean, these peasants are having a hard life, working daily to live off their life. They wouldn't have time to read these 12 books. Wise man, I'm really grateful that you really worked hard, but why don't you go think some more and and make a summary of these 12 books because it's too long. So these 12 wise men went again and they gathered, they thought about it, and then they summarized it into one book. And they came to the king. King, here we are. We have put so much thought into it and we took out the core of what these 12 books were trying to say. And we came up with this one book. What about this one book? What do you think about it? And the king was like, no, this is still a lot. These peasants won't have time to read this one thick book. I'm really sorry, guys, but why don't you go again? And to summarize, try to summarize this in one sentence or one phrase that my people could just memorize and use it as a knowledge and a wisdom in their daily lives. So the wise man went and gave so much thought into it and they came up with this one phrase. And that is, there is nothing free in this world. Because in this world, you live with other people, you interact. And there's nothing free. Sometimes you need to consider about them. Because if not, there will not be anything in return. And in modern society, in contemporary society, we have a similar understanding. We have this understanding of give and take. Meaning, there's nothing free in this world. There's always something laying behind, a reason and a purpose. And that's also how the major religions understand about salvation. Nothing's for free. In Hinduism, what do you need to do? You get what you deserve. The actions you did in your previous life, that's what's affecting you in your current life. That's what you deserve. It's a result of what you have been, how you have lived. What about Islam? Allah the God is going to put your good deeds and evil deeds onto a scale and see which one's heavier. And that's how you're going to be judged. So this world's worldview and most major religions' worldview is nothing is for free. You need to do something about it. There's a purpose and a reason. You need to do something about it. But then there's this one approach that is different, that gives a different approach of our salvation. And it's the Bible. And what does the Bible tell us? This is what the Bible tells us. Let us read today's passage again. Ephesians 2, 8 to 9. Let us read it together. For it is by grace you have been saved. Through faith, and this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God not by works, so that no one can boast. What does it say? You have been saved. How? It's a gift from God. You have been saved because it's a gift from God. Meaning, the salvation is not something you do. It's not something you earn. It's some, not something you have to act and behave for you to get it. It is given to you as a gift. What's a gift? It's something that is given for free. The Bible says, God says, there's something for free in this world. 
God wants you to provide something for free, and that is salvation. Although God wants to give you salvation, it's a gift from God. It's for free. We can't really receive it. We can't really take it because we're so influenced with our worldview from from the world that we're like, no, I'm not worth it. I need to earn it. There's nothing for free in this world. It's give and take. I can't just get salvation for free. I need to be a better Christian. I need to act in a better way. I need to have more faith. I'm not worthy to receive this gift. And God is like, no, it's for free. Get it. I want to give it to you. But we're like, no, God, no, God. I'm not worthy. I can't receive it. God is trying to give us the gift. But we're the ones not being able to receive it because we can't get it. We can't get that there's something free in this world that God would ever want to give salvation for free to us. But the Bible constantly says that God has gifts that He wants to give and it's for free. Let us read 1 Corinthians 2.12. 1 Corinthians 2.12. We have not received the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God that we may understand what God has freely given us. Amen. That we may understand what? What God has freely given us. The Bible accounts, the Bible says, that there are things that God wants to give us for free. God wants to give us things for free. Because He loves us so much, He wants to reach out to us, and He wants to give us the present for free. Some of our grade 12, will be graduating soon. And some of them are planning to go to Korea. And I remember when I used to be in Africa and I used to go visit Korea from time to time, after four years, after three years. And what happens when you go visit Korea after a long time? Your uncles, aunts, and your parents' friends, they come to you, they're like, oh, you have grown so much. Here's a yongtun. why don't you get it? And sometimes they give you $50, $100, $300. There's a time I even got $500. I'm like, wow, wow. And you're really impressed. But then, in the very beginning, I really felt bad because, I don't know, I didn't even remember them, didn't remember their face, didn't know who they were, but they were trying to give me these gifts. So I wanted to be polite. And I was like, no, it's okay. Can I? Oh, no, it's okay. But then some of them felt offended. Because it was their heart. They weren't trying to give me their heart, express their hearts to me, but I was refusing their hearts. And some of them were offended. And I learned that sometimes it's very important for us to learn how to receive gifts. The gifts that are given for free. Not because I'm worth it of receiving it. It's because they want to express how much they thought about me, how much they prayed for me, how much... They were thinking of me all along the past years, even though they weren't able to see me. And when I was willing to receive their hearts, they were really happy, really happy that I was willing to receive their gifts. And this is the same thing with God. God wants to give us the gift, the gift of salvation. But we are like, God, Maybe I need to do something and you need to evaluate if I'm really worthy of getting the salvation because, you know, I need to do something about it, give some input about it. I can't just get it for granted. But think about it. Some of you were in your exam week and what happens to the exam week that we get tested on what we have studied for just a couple months? We get so stressed out. We get so stressed out that we may fail, and some of us even fail. But this evaluation of God, if you really evaluate us, it's not about this couple months of what we've studied. It's about our whole life. That if God was really going to do it, we were just going to be traumatized and shocked and so stressed out. You might even faint. God evaluating your whole life, thoughts and actions. We can never earn it. We can never earn salvation. We can't do it. Just what we've studied for a couple of months is stressing out so much. But God being the judge and evaluating our whole life, we won't bear it. 
And God knows it so much. That's why Jesus came. Jesus came to take this exam on our behalf because he knew we couldn't bear it. And that's why he went to the cross and died for our sins, our bad thoughts, our lies, our addiction, our depression, our hatred, our jealousy, us not being interested in God. All these things, Jesus took it all on the cross and he says, it is finished. It is finished because he took it all. And on the third day, he resurrects again, showing to us that we will also be like him. It's a proof that he has power over death and he'll be guiding us over death. And that's why it says in John 6, verse 46 to 47, let us read together. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only he has seen the Father. I tell you the truth. He who believes has everlasting life. Amen. Jesus says, no one has seen the Father. No one really knows the Father. People try to guess about the Father and God, but they're guessing it wrong because they don't really know the Father. Who is the one person who can really know the Father? It's me because I'm from the heavens and I was with God and I know it. And this is what I tell you now. Whoever believes, he who believes in me has everlasting life. Who has everlasting life? He who believes. What happens to the people who believe? They have everlasting life. It's not something you do. It's something you receive. Do you want to receive this everlasting life? And why don't you try to read the same passage, putting your name into it, on he who believes. John, who believes, has everlasting life. Tommy, who believes, has everlasting life. Jonathan, Karen, Crystal, Charlotte, who believes, has everlasting life. What does it say? Does it say in the future, when you believe, you will have everlasting life in the future? No. It says, you have it. You already have it. It's already given to you. Why? You didn't do anything to gain it, to earn it, to deserve it, but you already have it. Why? Because it's a gift from God that is given to you for free, and you are willing to get it. When we open our arms and say, God, I want to receive it. Jesus, I want to receive it. I believe. Then this gift of salvation and everlasting life is given unto us. That's why in the Sunday of Easter, we rejoice. We rejoice because we saw Jesus dying for us on the cross and he resurrected. He showed that he had power over death. And we will also resurrect just as Jesus did. That's why tonight we're having a praise night. We're gathering together to rejoice on this Jesus' resurrection. We're gathering together to share this joy. That's what we're going to outreach, to share this joy with people around us. We're gathering together, inviting our friends, because we also want them to know about this joy that we have received eternal life, that we will also resurrect. Let us pray. Let us pray so that we may let down of our belief that we need to do something for our salvation. Let us also pray that we may have the assurance that we possess eternal life through our belief in Jesus Christ. Let us have a moment to pray.
Heavenly Father, thank you because you have done everything for us and you are willing to give us the eternal life, your gift of salvation. Let us not misunderstand it and think that we need to do something about it, but let us just receive it with joy, your gift that you have given us for free. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray, amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Here are the announcements for today. Prayer for April will be grade 9. Today, at DMC Lohe, second floor, EM Jesus is Risen Praise Night. You can gather at 4.30 for the outreach to go to the neighbors and share this joy. 5.30 Praise Night, 6.30 Dinner. Let's invite our friends to join on this joyful day of Jesus' resurrection. Mission trip. Mission trip. For summer, is open. It's still open. You can join in for Spain, Bella Bella, Chase, and the Diaspora Refugees. Pray about it. It would be great if you could join in on our mission trip. Have a blessed week, everyone. God bless you.